Welcome back to Overhead Athletics. Today we're talking about the do's and the don'ts of rehabilitating shoulder pain in the female athlete, particularly the volleyball player, the softball player, the overhead athlete. There's a few things you have to avoid and that's what we're gonna show you right now. So one of the things we see with exercises is people trying to go really far into the range of motion and end up compensating through the glenohumeral joint or the shoulder joint itself. A lot of times these are even prescribed by physical therapists or rehabilitation professionals who don't necessarily understand the pathology that's associated with instability in the overhead athlete's shoulder. If you're doing exercises that take you way out into rotation, either direction, but particularly into what we call external rotation away from the body, you end up gliding the ball forward in the socket and completely stretching out the front of the shoulder. And the argument is, well, you wanna get strong through a full range of motion. And while I would fully agree with that, you need to get strong and stable in a range of motion that you can control first. And so taking that shoulder to its arthrological limit or till the joint has no more flexibility and you're at the very end range is not the best thing in the presence of somebody who already has too much range of motion that they can't control. If we're looking at side ER, for example, or an external rotation exercise, you have to shorten up the range of motion. So that's one way that you're gonna get away from going way too far into the motion. And you don't need a ton of weight here, and you're focused on perfect rotation around. There's no deviation of the arm, there's no compensation, and you shouldn't feel any pain on any exercise. The biggest thing I get online is athletes coming to me looking for rehabilitation, particularly female athletes who have unstable shoulders and they've been going through PT and they're getting worse. And the reason they're getting worse is because they're going way too far out. We shorten up their range of motion and all of a sudden they're doing much better. So that goes as far as an external rotation exercise. And that also goes into a T exercise where athletes are going f way too far back behind their body and they're not controlling their rib cage or their scapula in three-dimensional space. So what we would do here, get you into an athletic stance, pin the ribs down, come into a T by not pulling through the shoulders really far, and then stretching out the front of the shoulder, impinging the back of the shoulder once again, pulling the shoulders together as we come into it. So I'm pulling through the muscles around the shoulder blade to get as far as I can with full control versus pulling through the shoulder and compensating. Worst thing you can do is allow that shoulder to glide forward in the socket. So you need to pull through your shoulder blades on an exercise like a T. On an exercise like an external rotation, you're avoiding that same angulation moment. The same thing goes for any sort of rowing exercise where athletes are coming into a, a rowing motion, which has some benefits, but is really not the most specific for an athlete anyway, considering that most athletes do these exercises wrong and then they end up compensating and driving their elbows really far back, the shoulders pop forward once again and the ball pops forward in the socket. If I'm gonna do a row, which I don't typically even prescribe for my female athletes, I'm going to have them pull the shoulders together to get the elbows back and they're really not going behind midline of the body. And so instead of pulling through a shoulder dominated movement, as you can see on my left arm here, they're gonna pull through a movement of the scapula like you can see on my right arm. That's the difference right there. One side hyper angulates the shoulder, the other side does not. One side trains the muscles around the shoulder blade while the other side allows that shoulder to compensate forward. So those are the three big don'ts and how to correct some of those don'ts. One of the things that I would advise, like we already talked about, is shortening up the range of motion. The other thing I would prescribe is some very basic small movements that place the shoulder in a stable position to begin the exercises. So I'm gonna show you three quick ones right here. One place I would start is with a light band focusing on higher repetitions. This is called a push out exercise. And we're just going into a pendulum like motion with the elbows straight. We're not really moving very far and we're keeping constant tension on the band. I'll do this for high repetitions. Number one, to refresh the joint fluid. Number two, to stimulate the non-painful 
fibers, nerve fibers that go through the shoulder, and number three, to promote as much blood flow into the rotator cuff as we possibly can. Once we move from this exercise, I like to go into an exercise with very little slack between the hands just pulsing into external rotation, where we're, once again, we're not coming way out far into the motion, it's unnecessary, but we're just doing little pulsing motions, squeezing through the rotator cuff, getting the wrist just even to maybe half an inch outside of the elbows, this way, not extremely far, and chest is up, I'm in good posture, I'm pulling the shoulders back and I'm pulling the shoulders down at the same time to seat the shoulder in the socket. And from there, I'll move into just a little bit of an exercise that's designed to get the shoulders to sit better in the socket. Instead of a row, one thing I like to do is an A motion where we're keeping, once again, not pulling back into extension this way, keeping the hands out in front of the body. So we're getting full pinch and downward motion or depression of the shoulder blades as we come back into this exercise. Holding getting isometric hold, once again, no pain, and we shouldn't feel anything popping forward. So there's three exercises that we typically prescribe to start with, three very basic exercises and three things to avoid with the unstable shoulder, especially in the presence of labral pathology, anterior apprehension, capsular sprains, those sorts of things. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one.